Long ago, before this day's confusion did begin Throughout the stars did we go wandering Distance was no barrier And time it had no hope Free to come and free to go Free to come and free to go Open up the book everyone, and welcome to Karmic Evolutions Astrologically Speaking. I'm your host, Sherry Horn Hassan of Karmic Evolution Astrology, and I'm coming to you on May 10th, 2024 from karmicevolution.com or any of your favorite podcast stations. Now, before we get into this week's astro news you can use, just my usual quick reminder that this show aims to bring you the truth about astrology and your soul's karmic evolution. And to remind you that a new show, show drops every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific and 2 p.m. Eastern, again, on karmicevolution.com or any of the major podcast platforms. Um, I also want to apologize for not giving an advance notice that I did not record a show last week. Um, you'll find out a little bit why a little bit later into the podcast, but I, uh, I was ill the week before. Uh, which happened to be my birthday when I recorded the show on April 25th. I still did the show for the 26th and then was pretty much down for the count for the next 10 days or so. So anyway, my apologies, and I am going to attempt to catch up somewhat in ways that make logical sense to everyone and then bring us to where we are now and where we may be going next week, including, of course, the most recent May 7th Taurus New Moon. Um, so finally, uh, well, not finally, but, uh, um, well, yes, finally. Okay, I am better, but that doesn't mean I'm completely clear-headed. There's a lot of pollen in the air where I live. <laughs> anyway, uh, just another reminder that I'm still offering to podcast listeners only my discounted 75-minute Karmic Evolution Natal Insight reading for only $125. Now, this reading is for you. If you want to learn more about the true meaning of your individual birth chart in order to gain greater consciousness about your soul's true mission and purpose in this lifetime and what may be or what may have been holding you back from achieving your highest destiny in this incarnation. So if you feel currently stuck, frustrated or otherwise stymied in your relationships, your career, your finances, your health, or any other areas of concern to you, and you'd like to learn why you arrived at this point, then this reading is for you. It's not all about the future, because we, in order to navigate the future, we have to be able to understand the past, right? So this reading is designed to highlight for you where there's a split between the conscious mind and the unconscious part, uh, part of your psyche. Because it's the unconscious part which runs the script, and that script is based on old soul-conditioned behaviors from the past, whether that's simply from earlier in this lifetime or from, and or from past life karma or karmic uh, incidences and things that happened to you or us, you know, before we came into this lifetime. So this reading is to help you understand that, and to help you become more aware and more conscious about how you can actually change this script going forward. You know, if you say, how come I always go out with the wrong guy, you know, or worse yet, marry him or wrong woman, right? Um, or how come I always get stuck in a dead end job or why am I always sick, right? So if you want to go become more conscious about how to connect or integrate the energies between the conscious brain, the conscious mind, and the unconscious, which, like I said, is running these old scripts based on habit, then this reading is for you. 
because this in turn will help you co-create your own future happiness using such astrological insight and to be able to better understand, you know, why we do the things we do. I think that's a song, isn't it? Why do we do the things we do? All right, usually I can carry a tune, but not today. Anyway, I still have a lingering cough. Everybody I talk to has this lingering cough, and I'm like, thank God I'm not alone. Anyway, and I thought I had COVID, but it turns out two tests said I didn't. So I was pretty shocked because uh, I had COVID last uh, October and the symptoms initially were very much the same. But OK, enough about me, because I'm going to talk about Hygieia um, and the North Node in a few. But anyway, they're uh, conjunction. Um, but anyway, if you'd like to look at your birth chart as a soul map, for your entire life's journey, meaning the past and how to navigate into the future, then this reading is for you. And if you would like, you know, to um, see, again, how you arrived at where you are today and what changes might be necessary in terms of alt altering, adjusting your beliefs or perspectives in order to find greater happiness in whatever areas of life are most problematic for you, then this reading is for you. Conscious awareness has never been so easy or so affordable when you take advantage of this special discounted Karmic Evolution Natal Insight reading offer for only $125 for 75 minutes. And you can find that offer at karmicevolution.com slash karmic125. If you have any questions about the reading, by all means, feel free to email me at sherry, that's S-H-E-R-I, at karmicevolution.com. All right, so let's get into this week's astro news you can use. But before we get to the May 7th Taurus new moon and its energies and what's going on now and into next week, I'd first like to review the past two months lunar cycles in general, which began with the March 10th Pisces new moon at 20 degrees and 16 minutes of Pisces which at that time was conjoined with Hygieia, the goddess asteroid of health, and she was at 23 degrees and 31 minutes, and the new moon conjoined with Neptune at 27 degrees, one minute of Pisces. And that followed, of course, as all new moons do, that followed the waning third quarter square of the cycle before, which had wounded healer Chiron in Aries conjunct to the true north node, at 17 degrees and 22 minutes of Aries on March 5th. So I think no matter what was said at the time by either me or any other astrologers or hopefully reputable ones, the truth turns out to be that looking back now, this, this Pisces new moon called us to plant seeds of greater empathy for those who are now both sick or suffering still from health issues or from wounds, both past and present. And that by the time of the Aries new moon solar eclipse, which occurred at 19 degrees and 24 minutes of Aries on April 8th, and note this degree's proximity to the Aries north node conjunction on, uh, on uh, hang on a sec. Okay, sorry. Mistake number one. You can count them as you go through my podcast. Ha! Anyway, I kept mistaking Aries for Chiron because Aries is coming up too, but um, so again, the Chiron North Node uh, conjunction was at 1722 Aries and the Aries New Moon Solar Eclipse at 1923 Aries, right? Roughly a month later from March 5th to April 8th. And that eclipse had both luminaries, the Aries Sun and the Moon conjoined to Wounded Healer Chiron and although not, not uh, conjoined closely, Mercury conjunct Eris. There's Eris. And Eris, for a reminder of those who either are just joining us, who have forgotten or people who are just joining us and never heard of Eris, Eris is a dwarf planet that represents chaos, discord, and strife. So since then, particularly, we've seen groups, Pluto's in Aquarius, remember, the sign of groups, trying to achieve social justice through political reform by speaking out and loudly so about such wounds. So again, Pluto is the social justice and social reform planet 
Aquarius is a planet of groups and also politics. So political reform when you put these two together, right? And yes, I'm talking about the student protests throughout the United States against the Israeli invasion in Gaza. Sparked by Hamas's October 7th, 2023 ter terrorist acts in Israel that killed 1,200 people and which resulted in the death or kidnapping of an additional 250 others, Israel's military retaliation has left 34,000 people in Gaza dead to date, including approximately half of them women and children. So, no matter your political opinions, no matter your political persuasion, no matter your emotional feelings about either side in this dispute, my point is that the heavens don't lie, right? So first, we were called to feel empathy for others whose health suffers or suffered at the Pisces new moon. Next, we were called to speak out against the suffering from wounds both old and new at the Aries new moon solar eclipse. And now, since May 7th, when the Taurus new moon occurred at 18 degrees and two minutes of Taurus at 8.22 p.m. Pacific time and 11.22 Pacific Eastern time, we're being called to show the kind of patience necessary to achieve a peaceful solution to our problems. Above all, the earthy fixed sign of Taurus represents peace, calm, and serenity. But this hasn't exactly been what we've been seeing, right? I'm not going to go into the details of all the college campus protests, some of which I was going to do last week, but, you know, didn't get the chance. They're easy to look up. They're on, you know, for a while they're on the nightly news in every newspaper, um, <clears throat> you know, all over the Internet, etc. So except to say that many of the arrests by local police, including in major cities like New York and L.A., were accompanied by violence as the Aries New Moon monthly lunar cycle waxed through the Scorpio full moon square Pluto in Aquarius on April 23rd. And Mars can join Neptune in Pisces and Venus moved into its own sign of Taurus on March 29th or the 28th and 29th actually. So the, the Mars-Neptune conjunction which I want to mention because A, it started a new two-year synodic cycle, and B, because uh, of the repercussions of it, which I'll share in just a moment, it cautioned us not to believe everything that someone else tells us because we may be shocked after the fact if and when we find out they lied. And in addition, it represented a time when energy levels are low. So, as I just mentioned, I was in the throes of a, of a non-COVID illness that included a sore throat, stuffed up sinuses, and eventually a wicked chest cough. So, I know I felt this energy personally. And, um, you know, the, the, the conjunction reminded us to conserve our energy rather than expend it unnecessarily. But this Mars-Neptune conjunction is also an aspect that can bring a good deal of fantastical daydreaming to us of the kind that may prove or seem to be better than reality. Remember, Liz Green goes on at length about this in one of her books, um, The Mars-Neptune Cycle. Mars, of course, is representative of male sexuality, and Neptune is known cycle in psychological astrology as the planet of illusion, confusion, and delusion. So let's say we prefer the word fantasy. So Mars, Neptune can be sexual fantasy, right? Mm. So, we'll, you know, you'll see how that connects perhaps. I mean, I, I, I'm not going into too many details about Trump and his trial because, again, they're so well covered and everybody knows. But, you know, he's in, still in the middle or, or they're moving towards the end of the trial in New York City right now um, over the hush money um, election fraud case brought by the um, New York DA, um, I forgot his first name, Bragg, Alan, Alan, is it Alan? Uh, anyway, Bragg, um, not fully recovered yet. Can you see? Anyway, I'm getting there though. So the case is all about whether he did or didn't pay her off after she threatened to expose a sexual liaison. And since she 
is a porn star, we can easily imagine the fantasy that a man might have about quote unquote hooking up with a beautiful, you know, woman. Other, I assume he thought she was beautiful enough, else he wouldn't have been attracted to her, right? Um, and he did, of course, tell her that she reminded him of his daughter, which is, yes, a little weird. But, you know, again, they've been making a big deal about that on the news, and so it's not anything that you need to hear from me, but you can also easily look it up. But the other thing I thought it was particularly interesting to note was that this Mars-Neptune conjunction, which occurred late on April 28th or early on the 29th, depending on your time zone, resulted in an April 30th announcement as reported by the Washington Post, which I quote, DEA plans to reclassify marijuana as a lower risk drug, officials say, a major move that would ease access nationwide. And the article goes on, the move by the Drug Enforcement Administration, first reported by the Associated Press, must receive approval from the White House Office of Management and Budget. Such a decision would not legalize marijuana at the federal level, but could broaden access for medicinal use and boost the cannabis industry in states where the drug is legal. Well, I think everyone listening knows by now that you can't make this stuff up, right? <clears throat> and it was also after this conjunction that Mars entered Aries on April 30th and Venus um, in Taurus squared Pluto in Aquarius. So I mentioned two weeks ago some of the results of the latter aspect's energies, but I didn't mention some of these. Um, and this is because I think some of them reported either the day that the podcast aired and I had recorded it the day before or since then, uh, days later. So um, we have um, we have these things that happened in the news uh, between April 25th and basically April 27th or um, or 30th um, that I just want to go over briefly because I thought they were related, you know, and so interesting to mention and, and not to leave out. So Venus square Pluto, Venus and Taurus, the sign that she rules, Venus and Taurus about the physical body, about the feminine divine, about... Uh, you know, feminine sexuality, right? Mother Earth, all these things. Um, but I'll remind everyone also that the Venus-Pluto square, which happened on um, April twenty, April 30th, was preceded on April 25th by Mercury station direct in Aries, right? And so that happened. Then we headed toward both the Mars-Neptune conjunction in Pisces, read dissolution of an action, Right. And the Venus, right, they, they rescinded some of the strictness around the marijuana and, uh, you know, um, people, you know, I mean, <laughs> when you smoke pot, when you smoke weed or whatever you want to call it, you're, you're you know, you're not 100% on terra firma. Don't get me wrong, not making any judgments. I do everybody does what they want to do. I'm just saying, so you don't have to smoke it. You can take CBD and it has medicinal purposes and yada, yada. I get all that. I'm not making any statement or any judgment about that. But it, you know, it, it can take you out of your physical, mental, emotional, or spiritual reality or put you in another spiritual or mental, emotional reality, right? Or physical. So, um, which is why, you know, it's now being used medicinally. But anyway, so on April 25th, Mercury Station Direct, and as we headed toward that Mars-Neptune conjunction and the Venus-Pluto square, <clears throat> right, uh, we had the following news out of the Associated Press. And here I am quoting, New York's highest court on Thursday, which was April uh, 20... Thursday was April 25th, I think. Anyway, so maybe this... Yeah, this was that day. Um, that was my birthday, so I remember it. New York's highest court on Thursday threw out Harvey Weinstein's 2020 rape conviction with a ruling that shocked and disappointed women who celebrated historic gains during the Me Too era and left those who testified in the case bracing for a retrial against the ex-movie mogul. So I just remind you, again, Venus is the things that I said, physical body, right? Feminine divine, female sexuality, the ability to procreate. And Pluto is... 
ruthless. Prudhoe is, is, you know, uh, you ain't going there. And if I say you ain't going there and I have to physically stop you, I'm going to do that. So when you have the two of these in square, you have the potential for what has arisen into the news, which is a story about rape. All right. This is Persephone and Hades or uh, Pluto and, and Persephone. Anyway, I go on with the article. The court found the trial judge unfairly allowed testimony against Weinstein based on allegations that weren't part of the case. Now, bear in mind, too, that this is happening right now with the Stormy Daniels case that Donald Trump is defending himself against. Just um, before I sat down to record this, they were reporting on the news that at the end of the testimony on Thursday, May 9th, that the Trump defense team was arguing in front of Judge Marchand that, um, you know, she was bringing up too much extraneous information that had nothing to do with the allegations against him and that they were salacious and designed to impact the jury in a negative way against their client. And as one legal pundit said, it's probably to coerce the appellate court If Trump is found guilty, the case will be appealed by him, go to an appellate court, and then they would rule a mistrial. So they were trying to get the judge to agree to a mistrial on Thursday, May 9th, and uh, he said, thank you, but no thank you, and that that's a setup for the appellate court, you know. Uh, Anyway, so I just say, you know, there's a comparison here, and this is still part of that energy, even though it was a week or more ago. But um, the article continues, Weinstein, 72, will remain in prison because he was convicted in Los Angeles in 2022 of another rape. But the New York ruling reopens a painful chapter in America's reckoning with sexual misconduct by powerful figures, an era that began in 2017 with a flood of allegations against Weinstein. So I remind everyone again that, you know, I had spoken two weeks ago about... um, you know, some of the things related to sexual relations and, and, and um, abortion issue, which is huge right now, right? Uh, there's so many things that have happened that I don't, I don't even, I had them to speak about last week, but um, I don't think I'm going to go into them for lack of time, but maybe, maybe I'll, you know, fit one or two in, right? Because different things are going on in different places. This is chaotic with abortion rulers being repealed in one state, and then being, you know, Florida now has a six-week abortion ban unless and until they have the referendum on the ballot in November and the enough people vote to um, eliminate the six-week ban. And I'm not even sure what they replace it with if the old one was 14 weeks or something like that. And then in Arizona, they repealed the 1864 law this week. So anyway, th- these things are all related to the... The, to me, in my mind, they're related to the Mars Neptune and to the Venus square Pluto, which occurred, you know, they occurred fairly simultaneously, right? But now we have something else because Venus is also finances as the Taurus is Venus. Venus is Taurus rules the second house and Pluto rules the eighth house and they are in direct opposition to each other. So second house is what I have in terms of possessions and money among other things. And the eighth house is what we have, joint resources, shared resources, particularly finances. So out of the Times on April 27th, we have this report. Putin's war will soon reach Russians' tax bills. Quote, Russia's president has signaled an increase in income and corporate taxes that will help finance the war. The move reflects his firm control over Russian policy. President Vladimir V. Putin of Russia appears on track to institute a rare tax increase on corporations and high earners, a move that reflects both the burgeoning costs of his war in Ukraine and the firm control he has over the Russian elite as he embarks on a fifth term in office. Firm control, I think, is a very mild way to describe plutonic energy. I mean, what are they going to do, right? Because most of them don't want to wind up dead on the sidewalk 20 stories below the open window that they just fell out of, or be blown to smithereens on a plane trip, right? You know, where their remains are scattered all over the ocean. 
The article goes on, financial technocrats in Mr. Putin's government are searching for new ways to fund not just the war, but also a broader confrontation with the West that is likely to remain costly for years. Russia is allocating nearly a third of its overall 2024 budget to national defense spending this year, a huge increase, adding to a deficit that the Kremlin has taken pains to keep in check. The proposed tax increase underscores Mr. Putin's rising confidence about his political control over the Russian elite and his country's economic resilience at home, showing that he is willing to risk alienating parts of society to fund the war. It would represent the first major tax overhaul in over a decade. And finally, we have this little tidbit that I just thought was so interesting that also hit the news in late April. I think this was, yeah, April 30th. Um, it was a headline that I saw. I don't have the source, but it, it was it was a mainstream news source because then I have a quote from Elle magazine. But first headline I saw says, at least three women were infected with HIV after quote-unquote vampire facials. So when I looked that up, it said a vampire facelift or PRP facelift is a procedure to rejuvenate your facial skin without surgery. This procedure uses injections of platelet-rich plasma, which is what PRP is, and a temporary dermal filler, hydro, hy hyaluronic acid filler. I probably said that wrong. It's known as a vampire facelift because the main ingredient is the filler in your blood. As per Elle magazine, and this was printed on May, April 30th, quote, three patients who received platelet-rich plasma microneedling procedures or vampire facials at VIP spa in New Mexico contracted HIV due to staff negligence and unsanitary facilities According to the CDC, Center for D Disease Control, Morbidity and Mortality Weekly Report published last week. So that would have been the week before, perhaps, April 30th. I'm not sure. And this actually occurred a few years ago. I think it was 2018. But it is kind of interesting that it hit the news, you know, around the time, obviously, of the Venus square Pluto, right? Um, and it was on April 26th when South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem um, when the I killed my dog cricket and then a goat story first emerged in the press. And as per The Guardian, um, oh, hang on a second. Yeah, what I want to say is I, I, I think this story is also pretty well known. I'll give you some of the basic details. But, you know, she published in her new book, which is either published now or days away from actual publication, that she had this horrible 14-month-old puppy named Cricket that was supposed to be a hunting dog, but he was undisciplined and he, you know, he didn't obey and he screwed up her falcon hunting or hawk hunting, you know, hunt or whatever. Um, and so in a fit of pique, she dragged him to the gravel pit and, well, basically assassinated him with a, I think it was, well, I'm not sure I shouldn't say, but I think a rifle, but whatever. She, 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 she gunned the poor puppy down. Um, and then as she was walking back to wherever, her house or something, she came across a goat on her farm who was also she considered pesky and she later claimed was a danger to her children because he used to, you know, I guess chase them and butt them or whatever. So she dragged him to the gravel pit and shot him as well. Um, and now, of course, she's experiencing the fallout from that because, as I said, the Guardian printed the story that, you know, broke around April 30th where, um, you know, this is some of the... Noam describes calling Cricket, then using an electric co electronic collar to attempt to bring, him up, to bring her under control. Nothing worked. Then on the way home after the hunt, which the dog had ruined, according to her, um, by going, quote, out of her mind with excitement, chasing all those birds and having the time of her life. Um, and so nothing worked. And on the way home, as she stopped to talk to a local family, Cri Cricket escaped Noam's truck and attacked the family's chickens, quote, grabbing one chicken at a time, crunching it to death with one bite, and then dropping it to attack another, end quote. Cricket the untrainable dog, Gnome writes, behaved like, quote, a trained assassin. 
And when she went to grab the dog, the dog, quote, whipped around to bite me. Then as the chicken's owners wept, Noam repeatedly apologized, wrote the shocked family a check for the price they asked, and helped them dispose of the carcasses littering the scene of the crime. And <coughs> through, <coughs> excuse me, through it all, Noam says, Cricket was, quote, the picture of pure joy. And then she wrote, I hated that dog, adding that Cricket had proved herself untrainable, dangerous to anyone she came in contact with, and less than worthless as a hunting dog. And at that moment, Noam says, I realized I had to put her down. All right. So, you know, um, they're saying that the only reason the story actually got out is because after she killed Cricket and then came upon the goat and then dragged him back and killed him as well, she realized that there was a construction crew of four or five guys who witnessed the whole thing. So nobody knows <laughs> if they were actually contacted uh, perhaps after she wrote this in her book, but she'd already previously talked about this. Anyway, I think we have another Mars Neptune in Pisces conjunction energy here, which is now, of course, none of this happened during these aspects. It's just happening during the um, um, relating in public, right? The press is picking up these stories. Um, but again, the, the Mars Neptune in Pisces conjunction, the dissolution also of a former action taken in the mistaken belief, or should I say wrongly fantasized hope by Nome, that this would win the hearts and minds of GOPers who backed her, as well as, of course, the cruelest of them all, current GOP presidential nominee Donald Trump, who reportedly, allegedly was considering her as his vice president for his run, you know, in November to become president again. But it looks like, to date at least, Gnome figured wrong since the backlash from dog owners, seemingly regardless of their political persuasion, has been swift and decidedly not positive. So I thought I'd take a really quick look at Gnome's natal chart. Um, we do not have a time for her, but I saw a few interesting things I just wanted to share, which is that she was born on November 30th, 1971 in Watertown, uh, South Dakota, and that the way that I calculate the elemental and modal mix, she has a, di a, um, def a, she has a dominant function, which is a, a term coined by Carl Jung, the psychologist and astrologer, which is, you know, the important one that the individual recognizes. So hers is Sagittarius, right? adventurous, fiery, you know, always up for the ride, clearly, you know, she doesn't hesitate, all that kind of stuff. Um, but she has inferior function, which is a chart that has no or only one planet in an element or a mode, and she has an inferior function, which is what lies beneath the dominant function, meaning we're not conscious of it and it only surfaces into consciousness during times of crisis or stress. So she has a lack of water because Mars in Pisces is her only planet in a water sign, and she has a lack of fixity on the, mo on the modal side because she only has the moon in her chart in Taurus. So I think it's kind of interesting to point out that she has Mars at 1345 Pisces, and we don't know what house because we don't know her ascendant. We do know the moon is in Taurus because when we run a noon chart, it comes out at 1604, which is roughly right halfway in between the signs. The moon only moves about six degrees every 12 hours. It moves one, to one degree every two hours. So if you roll it forward or you roll it back, you're still going to have it in Taurus, right? So we don't know the exact aspects to the moon or the moon or that the moon makes to her other signs but if it's somewhere around uh it, it looks pretty sure unless it's much later that it does square her nodes so we can't be 100 percent positive of that but she has a south node in in leo at eight degrees 17 minutes and a north node in aquarius 17 8 uh aquarius but we don't know where right now, Leo South Node is, you know, you come from past life karma, early life of being special. And special can be positive or special can be negative. So 
I'm not going to go into that right now because there's not a lot of time. Her sun is at 7 degrees 52 minutes of Sagittarius, so it trines her south node and sextiles her north node. She did, after all, become governor of a state, you know, one of the 50 states in America. And the moon is conjoined to Neptune at 2 degrees Sag 59 minutes, almost 3 Sag. And also, I'm sorry, not the moon, the sun. So she has a sun-Neptune-Jupiter conjunction. And Jupiter's at 15-18. So it, when we kind of roll all these together, there's a lot of fantastical stuff here. Sun Jupiter is someone who might think she's the queen. With a Leo south node, she might literally have come from some kind of royalty. I really don't know her heritage or anything. Um, you know, if she has an old line from, you know, from, uh, it's probably on Wikipedia. Um, I didn't see anything when I looked, but I didn't look that hard, admittedly. Cough, cough, still, you know, under the weather. But um, it's interesting to note that, um, you know, it, I think it's it's a little bit like we would say in New York where I was raised. Um, she thinks who she is, you know what I'm saying? So it's a little bit of maybe non-reality there, which I think was expressed and which came to the surface, like I said, during the Mars-Neptune conjunction. But, you know, the doubling down also of um uh, of her not denying that she didn't kill the cricket and the goat which apparently is nameless but also that you know she's completely non-repentant non-repentant and i know last sunday she was on i think it was meet the press and she when asked about it she riffed on and then suggested that the Biden's dog commander, the German shepherd who reportedly bit, you know, I don't know, I think she said 24 Secret Service people or White House employees, and then was remanded back to his home in Delaware, that she would have put him down just like she put down cricket. So, you know, there's a million memes on Facebook and Instagram and elsewhere, I'm sure, um, all about Christy Nome and cricket. But um, as I said, so many people do not want to be associated with her right now. But anyway, um, I wanted to say that, again, though, it may seem wide, she has an opposition between um, Mars and Pisces opposing her one degree and two, 42 minute Pluto in Libra. So it may not seem like that is close, but I don't know, you know, sometimes when you see, well, her son and her, um, hold on, they are the, the sun and Neptune and Jupiter, technically, if we look at them as a stellium, they are square to Mars or Mars squares them. So we have an angry person potentially, but the fact that it's waxing towards the opposition to Pluto brings in the violence, you know? So, you know, could be wrong, could be right, but it's like I always say it, the, the, the life is not so much in the chart as the chart is in the life, right? It's like you look at the life and then you look at the chart and you go, well, is this woman capable of being violent? I guess this story proves that she is. Now, many Americans and other people around the world who live on a farm may be very well used to that kind of violence and not shy away from it but most people seem to agree that you know if you don't have um any empathy you are certainly not going to be good at um judging when it's appropriate to put down an animal so i've been babbling so long that i forgot what i wanted to tell you is that what the deficit in water means okay so when a person has zero planets, and I'm only talking about the nine planets, I'm not talking about angles, I'm not talking about Chiron, I'm not talking about asteroids, inferior function in water, and this is according to Richard Eideman, the psychi psychologist, Jungian psychologist, astrologer, who sadly passed away many years ago in the late 1980s, but who used to teach at Liz Green's Center for Psychological Astrology, um, when you have one or no planets in water, and here she has Mars in Pisces, which my original astrology, local astrology teacher used to say is like trying to hammer a, a nail with a dead fish, all right? So it's not exactly a very strong Mars, right? 
But, and again, you know, if we look at a strong Mars as being, its highest function is to defend and protect others who are weaker or less able to protect themselves, and we have someone killing annoying, shall we say, animals, um, you know, we can sort of see there's an awful lot of frustration in that, right? And again, note that the Mars-Neptune conjunction energetically, at least the way that I do astrology, is very similar to, you know, that happened in the sky. Like I said, April 28th, 29th, the story breaks on April 30th to her natal Mars in Neptune. So this kind of a lack of water can manifest in a person as a lack of external emotion, but a person who feels the emotion internally very deeply. It can, it can um, manifest also as hysteria or like a crying jag. Now, we don't know because we're not in, a, in, you know, Christy Nome's house or her mind or her emotional psyche. But it can also make you feel like you're drowning. It can make you feel like, you know, feeling of dissolution, like everything's falling apart. A lot of people who have no planets or only one planet in water um, have a fear of deep water. So if you know anyone who is afraid of swimming or going into the ocean or into a pool or whatever, uh, they, may, they may actually, um, if you check their chart, if you have it, they may have a lack of water. And um, a lot of times it manifests, again, you can ask a person when they were young, especially, maybe not so much as an adult, but as a child, they had dreams about drowning or creatures emerging from the deep, you know, the Loch Ness Monster or whales or, or sharks or whatever, tidal waves or dripping water, like being in a cave or something like that, or water dripping through your roof, you know, you're dreaming about it. But the positive part of the inferior function in water, and we pray to God that this is true for Governor Christy Nome, is that it can often be expressed through artistic or creative endeavors. And many musicians and artists possess an inferior function in water, as do several psychologists and people who work in that psychiatric field, because they can elicit or emote emotions from others but they don't get caught up in the emotion, right? And the lack of <clears throat> fixity can likewise manifest in several different ways. And again, we won't know this about um, Gnome, but I don't think anyway, but uh, when fixed energy or, you know, inferior function and fixed erupts into consciousness, <clears throat> its inertia is a key word when fixed is an inferior function, that when it breaks into consciousness may do so in one of the following ways. And again, this is also according to Richard Eidemann. <clears throat> he wrote a book called The Magic Thread for anyone who's interested in psychological astrology, specifically related to elemental and modal mix and how to read a chart using those, <clears throat> those kinds of formulas. I find it highly useful and I use it all the time. And it rings true, I would say, 99.9% .9 of the time, at least in one of the ways, right? Anyway, um, the person seeks, seeks stability through actions like hoarding or holding on to. It can manifest as an obsession or an idea of fixe, especially when it manifests as intense sexual passion or obsession with someone who's completely unavailable, like a rock star or other celebrity. And it can be a hunger to learn and master everything you can about a particular subject. You know, there's a hysterical par paralysis. Now, you know, fixity on the positive side allows you to go very deep about stuff, right? I mean, you can really explore certain subjects and not get interrupted by, you know, daily issues or whatever. But um, I think, you know, it, it's a bit hard to apply this to Christy Nome since we don't really know her and we also don't have the time and ascendant and the house wheel, you know, how the wheel is set in her chart. But probably, you know, she's kind of like, I think, holding on to an idea, right? So there's a combination of stability through holding on to something, but in her case, it's maybe not as strong as an obsession, but an idea fixé, right? Like, I had to kill the dog because the dog was just no good and the dog couldn't be a hunting dog and it couldn't be a, a you know, was a chicken killer and a, soon it was going to bite me and I was going to bite my kids, you know. And so 
that in turn became a little obsessive and she grabbed her gun. And it was Bye Bye Cricket and the goat was just a, no, no, an innocent bystander who was in the wrong place at the wrong time. So I just want to reiterate a little bit um, to move forward into the May 7th Taurus New Moon, which I gave you the specifics of earlier, <clears throat> that um, it is in conjunction with, because the two luminaries are moving toward conjunction to Uranus and Jupiter, and those will occur not until Monday, May 13th, when the sun conjoins um, Uranus, and... Venus follows on the 18th when the Venus conjoins Uranus. So that's part of a pattern we'll get into probably next week. And the sun will conjoin with Jupiter exact on May 18th. All right. So, you know, lots going to go on between now and then. First, we'll have the waxing first quarter square on May 15th of the Leo moon to the Taurus sun. But let me go back to the theme of planting seeds of peace, calmness, and serenity, right? We've had several different things happen um, that is hard to, I mean, I think one of the biggest things that happened this past week, which was really on May 8th, so the day after the, the new moon, was um, Marjorie Taylor Greene, the representative in Congress from Georgia, called in her chit to request a vote for the ouster of Mike Johnson, the Louisiana rep who is the, the House Majority Leader for the GOP, and she lost very badly. <clears throat> so that was because there was more bipartisan effort on the part of the Democrats to quote-unquote rescue or save Mike Johnson rather than to engage in the martial kind of action of backing up Marjorie Taylor Greene and allowing her to get rid of him, which in turn would have thrown the House back into the kind of chaos that it already experienced last year when they ousted Kevin McCarthy. So, you know, at the time of the new moon and now, the sun is in Taurus now, and Mars remains in his own sign of Aries. So these two can make love or war, depending on their inclination, right? But, you know, since the Venus-Pluto square and the last third quarter monthly lunar square on May 1st and Pluto's retrograde on May 2nd in Aquarius, they ask us to go deep about where we need soul transformation at this point in both society and our own individual lives. And then we had the Mars sextile to Pluto on May 3rd. So all this was leading up to the May 7th, um, um, you know, lunation. But back when, as far back as what I mentioned before, the Pisces new moon back on March 10th, we're kind of being asked to investigate first the plant, the seeds of, and then to release, right? the tendency or perhaps the karmic habit of remaining silent about past wounds. First, we needed empathy uh, for others, right? But you can't really have empathy for others unless you have empathy for yourself first. So it really called us to have self-compassion because that's what enables us to have compassion for others. And then at the solar eclipse on April 8th, we were able to voice the wounds that both we personally and others suffer from. And at the Scorpio full moon, um, you know, before between the, the two lunations, new moons, right? It was the culmination of, you know, um, the solar eclipse and the conjunction to Chiron just gave us that whole formula, right? So if you look at it symbolically and with the knowledge that where eclipses fall is where they carry the most potential future impact, plus that eclipses reveal things previously hidden, we can see how control, both sexual and financial, and in this country in particular, is now being discussed, protested, and fought against out in the open. And remember, too, that I've talked before about the Mars-Pluto synodic cycle, which began when the two conjoined at zero Aquarius back on February 13th, 
right after Mars entered Aquarius on February 13th. And this is the cycle I mentioned that's also that's waxing now at this week's uh, sextile, which is um, occurring... Um, yeah, it's not occurring. This was from last week. Sorry, guys. There was a Mars-Pluto sextile that happened on May 3rd. So that was a week ago, and that was the week that I, I was uh, not well enough to do the show. But with the um, Taurus new moon, we had the Sun sextile to Saturn, which provides us with the energy. It was right before the new moon, but the energy was still there to be able to move towards realizing important goals in our lives. And that's what Rob Hand writes in his book, Planets in Transit. He says, but you may have to make some changes in the course of action that you originally planned. Well, that's underscored by the fact that, as I said before, the sun is now heading towards its conjunction to Uranus, which will happen on Monday, right? And then it'll hit Jupiter, as I said, on the 18th. So first it's going to, you know, Uranus is in Taurus. So is the sun. I've mentioned this numerous times. This is about a change in values, right? So President Biden has already made public now, only in the last day or two that I saw, that he's been withholding some of the bombs or other military equipment that the Congress passed the finances for a week ago or more, which is why Marjorie Taylor Greene filed her motion to oust the speaker because she didn't want Ukraine to be funded by the U.S. That Biden had, you know, or his uh, defense department, I think it was uh, uh, Austin Lloyd, the defense uh, cabinet guy, secretary, that he um, said that they are withholding some of the weaponry that they promised to Israel because they do not want Israel to use it in Gaza by going into Rafah. And again, I refer you to the news because it's all over the place that, no, after sending people from North Gaza to South Gaza and then decimating a large part of North Gaza infrastructure, now a million people are, are gathered in the city of Rafah, which is very close to the... Um, entrance point from Egypt into Israel, where most of the supplies are coming in, and that recently Israel, in retaliation for the, you know, rockets that killed four IDF Israeli soldiers this past week, Prime Minister of Israel Netanyahu retaliated by sending some rockets that then closed that, that roadway, okay, so what I'm trying to say is that um, as the sun post-Taurus new moon approaches Uranus, which has already been asking us for years now to change our perspectives about our values because our old values are no longer relevant, I will leave this to you to think about in terms of how the world thinks about Israel and how the world thinks about Palestinians, um, and leave it at that, but that people nonetheless on both sides are now dead, um, and that that can't be good for anyone, right, regardless of numbers. Anyway, I should say too little rather than too much on that. Um, so I think it's more than apparent. And Han continues by saying that your revised plans will be better than the old ones. Well, this jives also with the fact that Mercury only recently, 10 days or, well, like two weeks ago, I guess it is now, um, stationed direct, right? Because once Mercury stationed direct, particularly in the sign of Aries, it's go time. So let's start to put those revised plans into motion. He said this is also a good time to work with others for group goals now. And you should have enough energy to carry you through against any opposition you might encounter. Now, I would relate to that. It's no surprise that on college campuses across the U.S., students have banded together in solidarity to make changes. Further, they've revised their plans to sit in on lawns and public places. They occupied buildings. We all know about that because that's old news now, too. Um, but Hand finishes up with this 
sun, <clears throat> I'm sorry, this is the sun sextile Saturn <clears throat> that occurred um, on uh, right before the new moon too, on May 6th and May 7th. He says that uh, if you're at all clear about your purpose and if you understand yourself at all, this transit should assure you of success in any undertaking that you become involved in now. Um, and as your goals, when you do reach them, will be more permanent and far-reaching. All right. Now, I would relate that also to the peace talks, since a lot of this uh, podcast has been focused on the war in Gaza and the repercussions here that that, uh, you know, um, is something that uh, is very prevalent on the world stage. Now, I want to say, too, on March 8th, Hygieia, the goddess asteroid of health, conjoins the north node in Aries at, at um, um, and that, you know, there's several different stories that I'm going to run through very quickly. But first, let me say, I'm sorry, it's the Hygieia conjoins the true north node. I'm using that at 14 degrees and two minutes of Aries on May 8th. So we have the fact that, again, President Biden or his administration announced that it's negotiating with drug companies over Medicare drugs, which they already did successfully in terms of insulin to help reduce the cost for the major number of senior citizens who are eligible for Medicare uh, for insulin to treat their diabetes. We also had in Maine, uh, I'm sorry, in Massachusetts, the Steward Hospital Network filed for bankruptcy. That's a big story for that state. And again, as I said, the, Israel ended up through its attack, a uh, rocket or missile attack, closing the Rafa crossing to aid tr trucks. And finally, we had this really interestingly weird story yesterday I'm sorry, yesterday to me was was uh, May 8th too, that, um, well, basically that the worms ate into his brain. I was thinking the Pink Floyd song, right? And the wor worms ate into his brain. Anyway, um, I quote the New York Times from May 8th. Some of Mr. Kennedy's health issues were revealed in a 2012 dep deposition, which he gave during divorce proceedings from his second wife, Mary Richardson Kennedy. Now, he reportedly had a parasite, which is some kind of worm that infested his brain. But he also, because now, you know, they're interviewing every neurologist known to mankind. He also ate every day for lunch what turned out to be mercury contaminated tuna fish. And he ate a lot of other kinds of fish that were highly suggestive of uh, retaining mercury or other toxic chemicals. But the part that I found interesting is that. Um, This was discovered because a reporter for the Times went and back and read this 2012 deposition, right? So now we have a guy who's running for president who in 2012, when he was divorcing his wife and disclosed that he had this, this um, health situation, which again, you can read about, it caused all kinds of memory problems and things like that. That he was, and here I quote the, Mr., uh, the Times article, at the time Mr. Kennedy was arguing that his earning power had been diminished by his cognitive struggles. So he was seeking to give his wife less alimony by saying that his cognitive struggles prevented him from earning a decent living, right? And we have also, which I think I mentioned, but I'm not sure that on May 8th, Biden puts arms shipments to Israel on hold amid dispute over Rafah attack. The United States withheld 3,500 bombs last week out of concern that they might be used in a major assault against the southern Gaza city. And also it was written um, that the, the U.S., he, he's not quite confirmed this, but it's right almost there that some of the American bombs that had already been supplied to Israel were implicated in the deaths of innocents in Gaza. All right. So we're starting to see some of this, this, you know, some of this Taurus peace oriented energy take hold. So we'll catch up with the rest of it next week. And I want to thank everyone for joining me today. I hope you found the information presented here helpful as you continue your karmic evolution in this lifetime.
Please be sure to join me next week on May 17th for another episode of Karmic Evolutions Astrologically Speaking. Until then, may your journey be filled with karmic healing and the joy of greater consciousness. Namaste. Long ago, before this day's confusion did begin Throughout the stars did we go wandering Distance was no barrier And time it had no hope Free to come And free to go Free to come and free to go Open up the book The book of stars